Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to uh, explore, then start working on AZ305, which is designing Microsoft Azure infrastructure solutions. It's a new exam uh, in pipeline. It's not GA yet, but you can still go and give it in beta. As you can see here, it is uh, 303 and 304 is going to expire in March 31, 31st. And this is the only exam that is needed for the architecture instead of two, 303 and 304. Let's check the syllabus. Well, you can download the entire syllabus topic by topic from here, but the high level is we need to understand the designing of identity governance and monitoring, design data storage, design BCDR, design infrastructure solutions. You click here, it will <clears throat> open entire syllabus with all the topics involved or you should be aware of. So let's see how much we can cover and uh, how soon we can cover. The exam is not still uh, active in GA, it's in beta. So let's try to explore governance. Why governance? Because why not identity and monitoring? Because we are fresh with the CAF uh, cloud adoption framework and the last phase were manage and operate. So manage and govern. So let's pick the govern because we have everything fresh in our mind right now. So it, it would be easy to understand. It would be easy to explain. So without wasting any more time, let's jump into Azure architecture design for governance. Well, the very first thing we need to understand because now our perspective has changed. We are thinking, we are talking, we are going through the material as per the uh, architecture or as per an architect who should think and design the architecture. So in this video, we are going to talk about design for governance. So the very first thing will come into your mind is what is governance, right? Before we design anything, we should know what it is. So <clears throat> what is governance? Well, we already knew because of the previous videos that we have covered or we talked about, talked about the cloud adoption framework. But here, let's start with, with the fresh mind. So governance is all about control that we, we already knew. It's about set of rules and policies adopted by companies that run services in the cloud. It's, to be honest, it's not uh, only about cloud, you could have governance anywhere, right? You could have governance in your home, the hierarchy, parents, then you, your sisters, elder, younger. There is a governance there as well. So, uh, in order to understand it better, we need to understand what is the goal of governance, yeah? What is the goal of governance? Well, the goal of cloud governance is to enhance data security, manage risk, and enable smooth operation of cloud systems. Well, we did give some examples, uh, if you remember, if you're following the video series, because cloud is an open, Ground, anyone can create anything if policies or RBEC is not in place, uh, which are the part of governance, the tools for governance. So people can create anything what they want. And if they are creating some big VMs or snaps or something, which is creating a huge amount, for example, they enable the DDoS or they create the firewall premium or API management, which cost huge amount of uh, money. Maybe they create things outside the region. So it is also uh, cost and security, everything will get impacted. Hence the governance. 
Moreover, there are rules and regulations that you need to follow as per your uh, industries. Finance got their rules and health got their rules. Even the uh, geography got rules like European, yeah. yeah. GDPR, HIPAA, PCI, those are the compliances. So that is the goal. That is the goal of the governance. So I hope this would be clear, like what is governance and what is the goal of the governance and why we need this. So the next thing that we need to need to understand, now we, now we get it, what is governance? But the question is how to apply the governance in the cloud environment, right? We understand what it is, we understand what is the goal, but we don't know yet how to implement the governance. What are the best practices, how to do that? So how to apply the governance? Well, to effectively apply governance, you must create a hierarchical structure. This structure uh, lets you apply governance strategy exactly where they are needed and it would be sort of easy to manage because if you're applying governance like at so many places, you, can't, you cannot even manage it. So you're already in trouble. It's not solving the purpose, right? So before we apply the governance, we create the hierarchical structure, which is provided by Azure, even in the, all the documentations. How the hierarchy goes? Well, it goes as in management group comes at the top, then the uh, subscriptions, resource groups, and then the resources. Now, <clears throat> management group help you manage access policies and compliance for multiple subscription. And this management group can go up to six level, six level deep, like inside the MG, inside the MG, inside the MG. So that's why we need to keep a lot of things in mind when creating the management hierarchy. Now, subscriptions are uh, logical containers that serve as unit of management and scale because you have quotas or limits in each subscription. And subscription are also billing boundaries. Resource group, we have covered so many times, these are the logical containers into which uh, resources are deployed and managed. Uh, we think resource group as all the resources have shared the same life cycle. And inside the resource group, we create the resources. So management group, subscriptions, resource group and resources. These are the four uh, level or the radical, it creates the radical structure if you, if you go this way. If you can see these arrows, these are the hierarchy getting created, right? So that's what it is. Now we need to think because everything comes under the design for governance. We are not done yet. We have just started. We understood what is governance, what are the goal, where we need it and how to apply it. Now let's try to create the hierarchy for the management group. Let's go to the next sheet. There we go. Now, design for management groups. So again, before we design the management groups, we need to understand what is management group that we tried to explain in the previous sheet already. So management groups are containers that help you manage access policy and compliance across multiple subscriptions because we can apply Azure policies at the MG and it gets inherited, whatever inside that management group. It helps you, uh, we can, what all we can, we can do with uh, management group, we can talk about here. But before we <clears throat> come to this, what all we can do with the MG, let's explore a little bit for what purpose we can use uh, management group. Well, we can limit in which region uh, across several subscriptions, virtual machines can be created. 
For example, you can create a policy where you can restrict, nobody can create virtual machine in, in any other region except your primary region. You can limit the even the virtual machine. Nobody can create the big virtual machines, things like that. You can provide uh, user access to multiple subscriptions by creating uh, role assignment that will be inherited with a subscription. In nutshell, you're applying RBAC. Even uh, you can uh, monitor and audit across subscriptions, role and policy assignments as well. So this is a container inside which we are keeping our another containers as per the hierarchy. And it's not like we are gonna apply everything on this one. What are the generalized and policies should go at the top. And accordingly, it would become granular when we go at the deeper level. So, <clears throat> We were talking about what all can be done by, by management groups. As we said, policies, we said it six level deep inside the MG, inside the MG. And if you're wondering why it is like that, you would find it out when we'll start designing for a management group. So what all can we do? And just wanted to inform you by default, all new subscription will be placed under the root management group, which is your first one. By default, it's there. And Azure RBAC, role-based access control authorization for management group operations isn't enabled by default. You have to do that. And you do that once you create the hierarchy and apply the protection. Now, what we need to consider before designing the management groups hierarchy. This is very important. This will help you to design your hierarchy. Then we have the situation and we'll design the hierarchy. So we need to, we, because we are talking about the governance and this is the tool, uh, this is the, uh, this is one of the way we apply the governance. So we have to keep governance in mind. For example, Azure policies at the, management group level for all workloads that require the same security, compliance, connectivity, and feature setting can be applied, right? We need to, we need to try and keep this hierarchy reasonably flat. Ideally, have no more than three or four levels, though you can go up to six. A hierarchy with too many uh, levels will be difficult to manage. That's the only reason. However, if your organization is that big, that complicated, then you can do that, but it's not recommended that you make it more difficult to manage, right? Now, management groups supports common platform uh, policy and Azure RBAC across whole organization. Uh, so the designing of the organization should be uh, such that you can apply the common policies in, in their uh, maybe departmental structure, maybe geographical structure, maybe environmental. Right, that's why these points I have mentioned here. Now you will understand this once we explore this scenario. Let's suppose your org has sales, corporate, and IT departments. This is the scenario is uh, I borrowed from the Microsoft. This is not something that I have created, and this is the screenshot that I'll expand once I uh, once we will go through this uh, scenario. So the sales department manages offices in the West and in the East. The corporate main office includes HR and legal. The information technology department handles research, development, and production. And there are currently two apps hosted in Azure. So we need to design the uh, management group for this situation, right? <clears throat> Now, this is the whole hierarchy, but we are not talking about uh, uh, subscription here. We are not talking about uh, 
resource group here. We are only talking about the management groups here. So uh, at this level, because uh, the default, the beginning, it always has uh, tenant root management group or root group, right? So we need to keep the hierarchy, uh, hierarchy flat as much as possible, right? Because we have heard, we, we have already understood this through the design for management group. And top level management group. This management group supports common platform policies. We did talk about that. So that's the reason we have, you can call it whatever the name of your organization, organizational management group. For example, your organization's name is XYZ, so it would be XYZ management group, where all the policies which are common to the entire org can be applied. Then you see we have sales, corporate, and IT department. So what you can do, we can have, we can have, we can have three more management groups inside XYZ. And you can segregate these on the basis of sales, on the basis of corporate, and on the basis of IT. Because you, you, you would, you must be agree with me, all these departments would have a different policies, different users, different kind of work is happening there, right? So we can have these three hierarchies. Now, the corporate main office includes HR. So <clears throat> you can have uh, one of the management group as HR here under corporate and legal. Corp. Now, information technology department handles research, development, and production. And so the other research, development, production will come under this. That's how the management hierarchy will begin. And you can you keep in applying the policies and RBIC on, on, on these management groups, which are which are uh, shared by the inherited management groups. And inside that, you will talk about subscriptions in the next video where it would be designed for subscription. There is one more uh, screenshot that I took from the uh, Microsoft documentation, which says something like that. If uh, this is the management group hierarchy for one of the business unit, unit of the organization, not for the entire organization. These are the business unit which are in different geographies and under the geography you have environments, prod and non-prod, then you have environment, non-prod and prod. Inside the environment, you should have the subscription inside which you can actually create the resources. And that's how this hierarchy is designed. Till here, because this is the sign of uh, management group, till here, this is the management hierarchy, business unit, geography and environment. So these are different ways we can have our management hierarchy designed, which is very important. And this is also part of, you can say, before you deploy the landing zone, you should have your radical structure in place. Well, this will give you a uh, uh, wonderful way of designing your governance. This is the first uh, under the governance management groups. Then we need to understand subscription, resource group, and resources. So. Let's meet in another video and explore subscription or design the subscription for this radical structure. Till then, take care, goodbye.